This is the new Samsung A35, a potential contender for the best budget phone in 2024. Right in the middle of Samsung's A lineup, the A35 is aimed at the younger generation, ideally for someone on a budget or for a teenager's first phone. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the two aspects that I think are really important to this group of people. Performance in gaming and the cameras. The Samsung A35 isn't flashy or anything special, but it attempts to pack in the most essential features for its target users. This means a good display, a decently performing chip, along with a big battery life. The A30 series has been nailing these essentials for the last few years, but let's see if the fifth generation can also prove itself in the camera and gaming department. The Samsung A35 has last year's A54's chip, the Exynos 1380 packed side, and a slightly updated display, this time with no notch, and the same 120Hz adaptive refresh rate. The model I have here has 6GB of RAM, but in some places you can get 8GB. In terms of benchmarks, the 1380 isn't anything special, but we should be able to play most games at decent graphics. Using the phone for normal light to medium usage, scrolling on social media, jumping between different apps and sharing images are all pretty smooth on the A35. There aren't that many lags, but sometimes apps do relaunch if you haven't used them in a while. But to really push the A35's performance to see how good it really is, I've tested the A35 with four of the most popular games, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, S49 and Mobile Legends. Starting with Genshin Impact, I tested the game at several different settings to see how far we can push the A35. Genshin Impact is one of the most intensive mobile games available, so this will be a good indicator for the capabilities of the A35. By default, the graphics are set to low with a max frame rate of 30. At these settings, the performance is very smooth with no lag or frame drops. Changing the frame rate to 60 with medium graphics shows the overclock warning. However, performance and frame rate remain rather smooth and there weren't any drops. Animation and character movements stayed fluid and I didn't notice any drop in the frame rate. However, the phone started to heat up a considerable amount. Changing the graphics back to low but with 60 FPS still showed the overclock warning. But after playing for 10 minutes straight, I still didn't notice any frame drops or legs. The phone was still quite warm but not as hot as playing with medium graphics and 60 frames per second. Moving to Call of Duty, the top two graphics modes are limited by default, choosing between medium graphics and a high frame rate or low graphics and a very high frame rate. I tried both settings and if I'm honest, there wasn't too much noticeable differences between the two graphic modes. Regardless, the A35 ran Call of Duty very smoothly at what I assume was 60 frames per second. I couldn't see any frame drops or legs and the phone kept relatively warm. Next up is S49. By default, the graphics are set to high S49 is relatively an easier game to run than Genshin Impact or Call of Duty, but during the slow-mo car crash scenes, sometimes you can see the frame rate drop slightly. However, it isn't too noticeable, but it is still interesting to see. Lastly, we have Mobile Legends, which is the easiest game to run out of all the games I've tested so far. By default, graphics are set to Ultra with a high frame rate. Turning up the frame rate to Ultra issued another warning about overheating. Throughout the match, I didn't notice any frame drops or any lag. Performance was very smooth with a solid 60 frames per second. In conclusion, the gaming experience you can expect is a medium experience overall. Heavy games can be played at low to medium graphics at 60 FPS consistently. Medium to low games can be played at high graphics at 60 FPS consistently. The display in general performance of the A35 Force Price is very good and I think that most people will be satisfied. The cameras on the Samsung A35 are pretty decent for its price but overall a bit underwhelming. The main 50 megapixel shooter is pretty good in most conditions. It does fall off a little bit in low light but overall it does manage to keep a pretty consistent dynamic range with good highlights and good shadows in preserving most of the details in most of the shots. Okay, so here's a quick test on the back cameras of the Samsung A35. Shooting here at 4K 30fps and to be honest, the cameras on the A35 are pretty Eh. You can really start to see where the cameras fall off on the A35 as soon as you hit darker environments. They're not really anything special or anything particularly good, but they do get the job done and, and the main 50 megapixel camera is pretty good in good lighting. But the other two cameras aren't really the best and to be honest, I can't really see myself using them too much. This is a shot of me using the ultra wide lens. And this is a shot of me using the macro lens. You can shoot up to 4K on the main sensor. But on the ultra wide and on the macro, you, you can already shoot up to 1080p. I think that's totally fine because the macro and the ultra wide are pretty bad anyway. So I don't see there's a point in shooting 4K in those two cameras. The 5 megapixel macro and the 8 megapixel ultra wide aren't anything really special or usable in my opinion. The ultra wide is pretty grainy when it comes to pretty subpar lighting. And I can't really see myself using it more than 
once or twice. The micro lens is a pretty fun trick for just being able to zoom into things really closely, but it really can't replace a proper telephoto lens. The selfie camera is also pretty decent. It does take some pretty good shots, but it's not really anything special either. In all honesty, the Samsung A35 only really has one good camera, but at this price, I will take that. I think it is a solid compromise to have one decent camera and a phone at this price, considering how good the other areas of this phone are at this price point. So in conclusion, the Samsung A35 is a pretty solid phone and at this price point, I do think it's a pretty good value proposition. For someone who's looking at buying a phone on a budget, this Samsung A35 offers pretty decent performance, a great display, one good camera, and a pretty big battery life that can last you one or two days in my opinion, I think that it is a pretty good deal. There are some compromises and I don't think it is the perfect package. In terms of gaming, it's only going to be able to run games at low to medium settings and it does heat up quite considerably. In terms of the software, I did notice that a bit lag and the drop a few frames here and there, especially with social media where even though most of the time was pretty smooth, I did notice that when I did try to launch the app here and there during the day, some things didn't quite launch as I expected. For example, stories, which actually didn't work and I had to restart the app in order to use it again. For the most part, multitasking is pretty all right on the Samsung A35. However, entering split screen mode can be a bit janky and I did notice that there was quite a few starters which run to use it to vote. Are there better performing phones at this price point? Probably. But with a combination of a great display and battery performance, it gets most of the essentials right with a great display decent enough performance and a good battery life. It has one good camera that is usable for pretty much most scenarios. So this wraps up my review on the Samsung A35. I hope this helped you guys with your purchase decisions. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.